Hello, everybody. My name is Stefan Sutani, and I drank a lot of caffeine today, so I'm winding you up for what's going to be a power-packed episode. We've got this intro just full of energy, and we've got the entree, the main meaty part of the episode, with an amazing ingredient. That ingredient is special guest Jackie Cation. Oh, my Lord. What is not to say about Jackie Cation that isn't wonderful, whimsical, and whammy was going for the three w's the www.jackiecation.com that's where you can follow her for tour dates she's actually going to be in los angeles minneapolis she's got some shows in august in phoenix good old phoenix hope you guys haven't just combusted by that point because august is going to be a little bit hot but you know what you guys are tough sons and six or whatever i hope they they're going to the finals actually so sons in three sons and four i don't do math but that's not the point the point is jackie cation made this an extra special episode she's amazing follow her support her go to jackiecation.com for tour dates and get those tickies and show her some support tell her you love the pod go in those dms and be like jk jackie cation love the episode and uh you and stefan are a dynamic duo you should have stefan as your host for the jackie and Lori show he should be on all your podcasts no just kidding don't tell her that just tell her she did a great job show her some support show me some support by the way slide in my dms, my dms uh leave a review if you haven't already subscribed tell your friend what are you doing listening by yourself no have a watch party bring everybody together and make a drinking game out of it just drink every minute do a power hour and then it'll be so much better by the end it really will i promise i'm so good when you're drunk so it, it really helps me out and thank you guys so much for all the love all the support all the listens downloads and comments and without one more second well maybe two seconds here comes the episode what type of coffee person are you just regular espresso uh I'm making uh, a Vietnamese. Oh, whoa. Wasn't expecting that. That's amazing. Yeah, I, I came out of somewhere, right? <laughs> and, uh, it's nuts. Okay, let's, That's, let do you notice that. a difference in the taste, the boldness, the acidity? <laughs> yeah, this is, uh, this is actually, um, well, I'm going to sound like quite the asshole when I explain about this coffee. Uh, because it is coffee from uh, Hoi An, which is a town I was in two years ago. And oh. I love the coffee so much that uh, I ordered 20 pounds at a crack <laughs> uh, from a guy. Uh, and then that guy, he makes, he gets to make like 60, 80 bucks. And so I, I end up spending essentially 20 bucks a pound, which is a a little expensive but not the most expensive coffee in the world and uh and i love it because and it's weird i don't like flavored coffee and uh mm. you know vietnamese coffee usually has a lot of sugar in it i don't put yeah. add sugar to it but this is slightly flavored and um oh. so it's super smooth coffee and has sort of i don't know it's it's kind of chocolate notes to it but not sweet I was yeah. going to say notes as well. That is oh. notes. Sometimes there's notes, you guys. The it turns out the uh the coffee will give you notes, which is better than uh getting them from I don't know. Uh, uh there's another term. I forget. Here's Over okay. Tea. You're recording, which I think is fascinating already, which is good. And then we're going to I I got to pour this. Oh. Oh. This is great. By the way, I, I do record just off the top in case there are any nice comedy nuggets or tidbits that the listeners or watchers. Would They're like going to want see. this. Like, this is going to be a tidbit people are going to be interested in. Oh, yeah. man. The, uh, yeah. I, you know what? They're taking, if they're not taking notes, they will be soon. And I'll have a link in the show notes to buy this Vietnamese coffee. And No, no, actually can... you can't. That was the thing. I had to contact the dude in, in, oh, in yeah. Vietnam because... I wanted to buy it just online and there was, it was not an option. It was not an option. I'm going on the road tomorrow and I've never, and I haven't gone on the road for 13 months, 14 months. And so I'm a little twitchy, Stefan, a little twitchy. Man, I, that's one thing I wanted to talk about too. I saw on the Jackie and Lori show and heard a little bit about it. You're going to be 
on the road yeah. again. I almost sang starting that. tomorrow, uh, and it's the it's the twenty seventh, so starting the twenty ninth. So I fly out tomorrow, and the shows start on the Thursday, the oh, the twenty ninth of whatever month this is, April. Mm, and, that's right. Um, yeah, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then next week I'm doing a Friday, Saturday, and then the following week I'm doing a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I believe, and then. I got a week off, and then I'm back to I think a Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So it's almost wow. like 2019. Wow, that's and by amazing. then I should be nice and warmed up. Feel free to come to those Denver Comedy Works shows. <laughs> and uh, it's not just any company that you're bringing along with you on these shows. I think this first show is with Brian Regan, which amazing. oh th yeah, he's bringing me first of all. What what should we should all be very clear who's bringing who on. Uh, on the Arkansas run, it is Brian Regan bringing this one right here. Brian He's filling Regan the room with notes and, of Jackie, uh, and I hope to come back. Uh, notes of Jack. That's it exactly. And uh, I, uh, the the club owner is supposed to be a good guy. A guy named Tiny Fucking Town in uh, Arkansas, and um, yeah, I don't know if he's the this month's lineup is hilariously like kind of weird i mean let's look at i mean quite honestly i, I kind of need to look it up lowell arkansas the grove comedy club so it's brian but it's also i know that oh that it's been around for five years i did not know oh it's wow. also got music so at the same time now we got brian yeah, I th you know, I think it's one of those complexes. And because it's Arkansas, it's probably been open the entire pandemic. Um, but it's Brian Regan, Jim Brewer, and Rodney Carrington. So, what I mean... a time to live in Arkansas right now. That's what, incredible. It is a glorious time to, to hear what it, you know. And Brian Regan, I'm not saying that Rodney Carrington and Jim Brewer aren't perfectly good comics they're very good comics right. they're not brian regan first of all uh who is an amazing comic and uh there's only so many comics i'm willing to still feature for <laughs> and it's gonna be right now it's brian regan i would probably feature for some other comics if they would pay better mm -hmm. but brian regan and maria bamford both pay sort of low headliner money for me to feature for them so Mm, it I makes see, it I and see. and i have you know i don't know if i don't know if you know this about humanity but uh i got a living to make mm -hmm, mm -hmm. ah yes that is that is very true very very true and you know speaking of quality amazing comedians for those of you that are wondering who is this amazing guest <laughs> with the vietnamese coffee it's jackie cation everybody comedian extraordinaire podcaster actor no a, oh the it's a door forest. it's a dork forest mug there was a there was a glorious time when i was almost going to do a dork forest merch uh with a with a tumbler so i got a sample you guys didn't oh. never never took off stefan didn't take oh off. my gosh well hey it's never too late to uh yeah it's true it's except for the the amount of storage in my home is finite so <laughs> i'm not uh though i think these these were going to be drop shipped like i think it was one of those cafe press kind of things where you were like, just give us a design and we'll fulfill it. Yes, Jackie Cation, stand-up comic. Uh, I, can you tell this is not my first cup of coffee today? Holy smoke, I'm a little, <laughs> I'm, I'm like a hummingbird over here. Bzz. Oh, but you know what? Each note is sweeter than the last, <laughs> so it's just, it's wonderful. And I, and also, thank you so much for coming on the pod and gracing me with your presence because sure. You are an absolutely incredible comedian, been doing comedy for over 35 years, which is long amazing. Time. Long time. I used to just count the eighties as one year. And then I was like, no, count every year. Go for it. What the heck? And uh, <laughs> I think I got competitive with Lori Kilmartin, so. Oh, um, I see, I see, which- um, Cause she you started also... in 89 or 88. And oh, I started man. in 84, so. That's when That's a lot right. of people were born, 84. It's a long time ago, is what I'm saying. I was going to say, I started in 88, but like started as a human being. So I feel <laughs> like... Uh... I'm going to storm out. 
you don't mind. And, uh... <laughs> but I, you know, I do have to ask what the secrets are for the the facial creams and everything, because you do look probably about as young as I do. So. Oh, well, I'll tell you why, because uh, we're doing this over Zoom. And over Zoom, uh, there's the thing, you just slide that bar, it can remove d just decades, and your nose, eventually. Eventually, you just have no nose. And Yeah, uh, yeah. I did see the Michael Jackson feature, where it just, whoop, whoop, whoop. Yeah, yeah, so. they just take it right out. They just take it. <laughs> the, uh, the, I don't know if you, do you have the beta video settings? <laughs> I do. The beta <laughs> video settings. The studio effects. I can give myself better better eyebrows. Who doesn't want better eyebrows? What? Oh, hello. Yeah. Oh my god. And then I've if you forgot to put lipstick on for work, uh, you, they'll do some lipstick for you. <laughs> and you want? Let's see. I think. Uh, this is amazing. Oh, I never know. Oh my god. So <laughs> but here's a mustache. <laughs> let me think the, for some reason zoom decided to go with like snapchat filters at so at this at one point during the pandemic where they're like no people people are bored and they're not wrong i mean yes moments of family yeah. fun on this thing that's very true i can't i'm just imagining at my next quarterly business review with the dog filter being like so the numbers are down <laughs> And the tongue just rolls out. So this is a light in the mood. That's incredible. And speaking of Zoom and people being stuck in their homes and being depressed, and um, I know you were talking about getting back mm -hmm. on the road, but I feel like you have done such a phenomenal job of embracing, maybe not a phenomenal job of holding the coffee, but embracing the Zoom shows and um, yeah. and, and really being able to take it for what it is, I guess. Because I've heard a lot of comics that are like, I won't do them. Um, um, or I hate them, and it seems like you have progressed fine with them. How how has it been well, for you, though? Here's okay, and I have said this many times because yes. I have I I did get in on the ground floor of Zoom only because I was supposed to record my album and last year, and I had two different dates, and I had to keep the 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 chops. I had to keep the you know, remembering what the jokes were, what the timing mm -hmm. was. And the only option was Zoom, though other people were doing Instagram and, you know, a bunch of other right. things. And I was like, um, and, and you know, drive-in theaters, <laughs> whatever. Uh, but you, the people, there were people who were like, it isn't real. It isn't real stand-up. And I was like, arguably, uh, I don't know if you've ever done a Best Western in Victorville, California. Also not real. Also not real. I don't know if you ever did that that bar in Phoenix where they afterwards there was goldfish that you would shoot to race them. Do you ever do that one? No, I didn't know that uh, was a thing. Well, it's that's because I'm sure PETA was uh, completely offended. <laughs> it was essentially you you would they had two rows of water and there would be a goldfish in it and you would take a squirt gun that was attached to the to their fish tank. And make the fish swim that way. And they would the have most, races. Yeah. I was just going to say the most surprising thing to me about that is being in Arizona, that they didn't actually use revolvers to just shoot at the fish oh, to get right. them to swim. We're going to scare them fish. We're going to scare them fish into moving. <laughs> no. Uh, it turns out goldfish have tiny pea brains. <laughs> and you really just kind of get the water going. And But that's where the show was. And it was, it was an okay show. I mean, sure. here's me with stand-up comedy. Do I get to talk? Yes. Uh, is it, mm. I mean, is it the gr the greatest shows I've done are usually in rooms with about 220 to 300 people with a low ceiling, with uh, people are packed in like like rats on a, on a ship. And, um, and you can, you know, everyone's catching COVID if, if they were doing it now. But I mean, everybody's sort of packed in, they're in a good mood. Um, somebody who isn't a monster opens for me. <laughs> so they're nice and warmed up. <laughs> and then, and then I get to do 45, 50 minutes of, you know, like Acme Comedy Company is my home club in Minneapolis. And it's my, it's my favorite club in the world. But there are other clubs that are really, really comparable mm -hmm. and also incredibly well run and, and look like, um, 
I will say that that uh, the downtown Comedy Works is one of my favorite clubs. Mm. Um, Portland's Helium is is bigger, but it's pretty great. It seats like three fifty, and mm. so I don't know, but um, okay. And then uh, and then my my husband's gonna pipe in and say he's gonna take the doggo for a walko. Oh. Do it. Hello, husband. Hello, husband. I've never <laughs> I've never said that before. <laughs> Hello, husband. Yeah, that that, that that sounds dodgy. Um, yeah, my, especially with my wife in, within earshot. So right, everybody's uh, everybody's <laughs> loved ones are within earshot, and we're like, "Hello." Uh, he, but, he doesn't want to go. Right, you got to go grab the leash. You could edit this out. This is perfectly good, right? This, this is this is you know what this is golden podcasting moments. <laughs> where we're all just living in the moment and we're all saying to ourselves, what did I pay for this? Oh, that's right. It was free. So, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, don't worry. In post, it's going to be beautiful. It's be <laughs> seamless. <laughs> seamless. Make a note of the time. Uh, <laughs> Amazing. But, but yes, yeah, so the different comedy clubs and the different, what? Now, I know that there are probably some very obvious things that make a good comedy club from a bad comedy club. But in your opinion, um, you know, some of your favorites, why are they some of your favorites and, um, what are yeah. some that are some of your least favorites? Well, um, I'll say this is that what makes a good comedy club is like I said, where they're, you know, it's not too big. The ceiling's right, not too right. high. And, um, and just, I mean, th those are the physicalities of it, right? Where the ceiling isn't too high. So the jokes don't go up into the, the sound system doesn't go up into the sky and you sort of lose sense of timing and, Mm. and 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 hearing the audience in the moment nice. and and then the f f you know sort of if the if the room's too big you know like i for brian regan you end up doing um you end up doing like theaters or even coliseums and stuff or uh, uh, what are those things called where people play football stadium oh stadium. Uh, <laughs> stadiums like he'll play like really big venues and mm -hmm. then you have to you know you say the joke and you have to wait for it to hit the back wall roll back so that everybody's gotten it and then you can start the the punchline you gotta wait for it to hit the, the back wall then you can start the next joke and that's that's what zoom is like a little bit too where you have to wait because of satellite delay literally mm -hmm. satellite delay and because there's, you know, like, like right now, you know, there's, there's recording things that, you know, you could start talking and then we would talk over each other. Mm. And so that's why a lot of, like a lot of people who run different zoom shows, they don't want to, they don't want to unmute anybody, but you can't to do stand up in a vacuum is. You know, I, I I have little interest in doing a studio album, you know, of stand-up comedy, you know, where I'm just in a studio and there's dead silence. And I'm like, uh, somebody play a guitar, or plink, plink, plink on the piano to simulate timing. Um, but bad, and but uh, on the flip side, clubs that are bad, you can tell when you walk into a venue if... The staff is unhappy. And if the staff is unhappy, that is not going to be a fun week. Because there's going to be people super tense. And you can't get, you got to be loose. If you're going to do stand up, you got to be able to, hey man, you know, and kind of, it has to be loosey goosey. And the, and the wait staff and the bartenders and the bus, you know, the door guys and the, all those people have to be psyched you know to see stand up to want to be part of the show to get to hang out with each other and comics and you know club you know and so clubs that clubs that don't things that can create bad vibes for the staff besides just crazy ass you know sexism or racism <laughs> mm -hmm. where i mean i there was a club in tulsa where the club owner would say weird racist things to his employees. And it was very hard because they had to laugh it off, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. 
And he would say weird sexist things to his employees and they would have to laugh it off. He would say weird sexist things to me, but I didn't have to laugh it off because uh, I didn't care if I ever came back to Tulsa. Uh, that's actually uh, not strictly true, but uh, it's, it's kind of true where I'd be like, uh, Randy, you're a dick. Stop saying shit like that. And, um, but, but people who, you know, this is part of their lives and they want, you know, they want to see Rodney Carrington, right? They want to, Right. They want to hang out and see comics and, you know, there's some, there's a good vibe to it and there's a bar. You, you can get a beer, maybe a shift, you know, it's an yeah. okay job, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, and I wanted to circle back just a little bit because I know you were saying that you were, you had your album ready. It was almost in the oven and you had to take it out. You had your dates <sighs> and, and now going, uh, when you were doing Zoom and now going back on the road, when you were doing zoom shows did you try and perfect that material or sculpt it even more or did yeah. you say okay yeah okay some of it some of you know i've been working on that album before we went into lockdown i'd been work it had been three years that i that i had been working on the album so mm -hmm. now it's four years and so some of those jokes are literally four years ago um is when wow. something happened <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. that is the premise of that joke. Well, I'm going to have to massage it and change it because it, I can't, nobody cares. They're like, oh, well, really? <laughs> you know, unless you're telling them a story about when you were a child, you can't go, you know, four years ago I was in Vietnam or whatever, <laughs> or, you know, un unless you were in the war, like if you're a Vietnam vet, you could do that. You know, <laughs> right, 40 right. years ago, I was in Vietnam, but yeah. four years is such a terrible amount of time. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a dumb I haven't thing. thought about that, but that is kind of true. Oh. Yeah. So, so I've been working on the same, I've been working on essentially, I had probably an hour and 15 minutes of it needed work. And now I have an hour and a half and 15 minutes of it needs work and, f and 10 minutes of it might be dated. It might be too late. I might force it anyway. I might, mm -hmm. I might do one incredible album or I might do just two albums that are not incredible or that are just good. That's, that's but, really, but cool. I'm recording but it in July. That's what I'm recording. Okay. So At is it going to be at Acme? And yeah, you're... it'll be at Acme. And That's I'm, and, cool. uh, I've hired a guy to film it too, to put out a, a DVD special, you know, like, uh, not that anyone has offered to buy it, but you know, it'll be ready if anybody were to want to, and I can make a DVD or I can just put it up on YouTube or whatever. And, um, and I can cut it up into a thousand one minute chunks and put it on TikTok and reels and all those things. But, um, mm -hmm. It's it. So, you know, we all paused our lives. Right. Uh, and the, and a lot of people died. <laughs> so yeah. me not getting to do my album is not, you know, obviously the worst thing that happened in the pandemic. <laughs> so, right, right. um, <laughs> it was incredible, but no, it was. And so. So for me to like, I'm kind of psyched that these, this first week out is Arkansas working with Brian. Cause I, you know, normally I just do 20 minutes in front of him and, mm -hmm. um, to do live, even if I, even if I'm doing thirties and I would like to, but even if I'm, even if I'm only doing twenties, um, it's kind of a great way to get in front of regular audiences again. You know, I can yeah. work on the timing. I can do a different 20. I can do, you know, they have to be sort of Brian Regan fan, you know, nobody wants to hear, uh, I found a hair tie and, or I found a cock ring and I thought it was a hair tie. And, uh, so I picked it up to throw it away and it's gross. So, I mean, that, that's a story and you have to say the word cock ring. If anyone right. knows a different word for cock ring, please, if we could somehow PG 13, the word cock ring, that'd be great. And if I could say the word cock ring one more time. We, we, yeah, weenie ring just doesn't have the same ring no, to it. To be. No, no, uh, penis wrap. No, uh, it doesn't have. It doesn't you know just go kind of like a penis crown? <laughs> it could be, I suppose, but yeah, it's weird. A, yeah, a penis penis brace. Uh, you know what? Mm -hmm. I will. 
we will um we'll workshop that separately there you go (laughs) it will come full circle eventually but come on uh, (laughs) i i also did want to say too um because you have numerous albums out and Mm -hmm. they not a number of them have reached number one on itunes amazon over what 10 million all of them except for the first one Oh, don't listen to them backwards. I get much worse at stand-up comedy. Uh, you should listen to them from the beginning, moving forward. <laughs> you know, I, it's I an actually... okay album. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, what were the things that you have noticed from the first album to the last album where you were like, oh, I really improved in? I know you've mentioned timing a lot, um, like timing or are there other kind of techniques that you thought, okay, well, I- That's an interesting question. Cause the thing, the difference between the first album and the last album, there's things that are weird about it in the fact that I'm genuinely talking about the same stuff. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. sort of like, I saw Tim Allen probably four years ago and uh, dude was still talking about tools. And I was like, really? Man loves tools. We're talking 30 years later, dude's still talking about hammers and shit and so (laughs) i'm still talking about my dad my brothers my you know my my and now you know and i got married so Mm -hmm. now i now i talk about my husband but i mean it's it's all sort of family you know stuff about my family and the and the people i'm related to around me the things that i've gotten better at i would say I don't, I don't know. Like I, I was listening to the album and, and you record the album and that is a moment in time when right after you record it, you write a new punchline, right? You tighten, you tighten up a bit, Mm -hmm. something gets fixed in a Mm -hmm. bit that was okay. Or it was good. Right. Right. Like there's bits that people freaking love of mine, which are, is very gratifying. Uh, very nice. The LA pet story about the cat uh, going to the ophthalmologist. That's a wacky, it's a wacky joke that uh, people, but it's from 1999 or I think it was on the 2003 album. I almost put it on the 2005 album. And, um, but I've been doing it since at least 2003, 2002. And so, mm-hmm that joke you know i listen to it now and i'm like okay you could have tightened that up and there's the spooky reading girl bit which is about uh, me reading in junior high i listen to that and i'm like well that could be tighter and so i mean there's i don't know if musicians do that you know but Mm -hmm. i know that The spoken word stuff, it's, it's so, you know, unless it's written and then you publish it, you know, and it's, and there's been editors and like, cause standup comedy is such a self editing gig. Yeah. You, you listen to it in the past and you're like, oh, this could have used another pass. (laughs) This is the second draft of this could, this could have used a third draft or whatever, (laughs) but now it's on an album. So we're done. And, uh, (laughs) You know, and unless somebody really liked that joke and wants you to do it on TV or wants you to do it in, you know, in some other venue, you don't really get a chance to to keep continue working on it. Mm, that, okay, I, it, that makes sense. Yeah, I I do have to say too because I've watched and listened to a lot of your comedy over probably a couple of years and just here nice. and there, and then I, which is amazing, and then I also just listened to again the 2017 album i am not the hero of this story i think it oh is. yeah yeah 2006 it came out six uh, well i recorded it yeah it was 2017 yep and yeah hero yeah and it was a great album and <clears throat> one of my favorite jokes or bits rather mm-hmm. was about you talking about your family talking about how your family deals with death and how your dad um es- escaped death oh twice. right that huge that that heart surgery thing yeah yes and i just yeah. thought first off to be able to tell a story with so many characters in it was <laughs> phenomenal and the vo- velocity at which you spoke which is a little 
quicker than some right? comedians and being i was able to keep up and I was, I don't know what I was doing, maybe vacuuming, maybe making some Vietnamese coffee, something <laughs> complicated. And I was, I was able to keep up with the brothers, the sister-in-law, the angel of death and the, uh, <laughs> and your father and everything. Yeah. And then you were, you were able to take the lines from some of the folks and then they would, you, you would use the same line or they would use the same line. And it was so mm -hmm. intricate and well done. And I love the tag about your brother meeting with the Koch brothers and <laughs> them oh, calling. Yeah, yeah. Oh my and, god. Um, yeah. It was it was such a beautiful bit where I thought just I, I felt like if you've ever seen Netflix's um chef's table and you see the chef that has just been cooking or baking cooking for 30 years and you're just seeing mm -hmm. it in action and then you're you're hearing yeah. Vivaldi's fifth or whatever that musical piece is. And I just felt the music in the background as you were saying this bit, and I was like, this is true art in itself. That's, that's, I appreciate that because I have like those, those bits. The reason I talk so fast through that uh -huh. bit is because it's so long and it's not set up punch. Uh -huh. It me uh -huh. cause it's, a, cause it is a funny story, right? It's, it's a story yeah. with a lot of different moving parts and mm -hmm. I have to, I've got, I've got, you know, so many parts of it, but I need it to be funny, right? It's got to be funny because it's stand up. So in my head, I'm like, all right, you got to get to a laugh line, even though this is, you know, this is the story you want to tell. So, this, so I wanted to tell that story. Yeah. But to tell that story, I had to have enough laughs in it to make it worthwhile for the audience to sit through it. And mm -hmm. I have another one of those also mm -hmm. about Elliot Cation. Why wouldn't it be? And, uh, and he is, he's such a character. He was like, you know, when it, when he, you know, sometimes he always thinks he's going to die in August and I'm like, so August comes around and I'm always like, not this year, dad, I need another 20 minutes out of you. <laughs> I just, I got, I got another album after this. So you gotta keep, you gotta keep, <laughs> you gotta keep writing for me. <laughs> and oh. but i but and my brother russ is is angling not he doesn't know it but he's angling uh to take that space uh as as the guy that i tell those jo stories about oh that's so, hilarious because because russ is he told me some story and i was trying to make it fit into a bit but it ended up being about my dad but it's not really about my dad it's about my brother russ who and this had it i mean the kids are like his sons are older now, right? They're probably in their mm -hmm. early twenties. Mm -hmm. And so this happened when they were like 15 and 17 or 17 and 19. And neither one of them had any girlfriends. And my brother Russ goes, you can't sweat it. It's going to happen. First of all, you're going to live to be at least a hundred years old. There's going to be so much sex in your life. It's going to be fine. Do not beat yourself up that you don't have girlfriends right now. And you know, they're just, yeah. you know, they're, they, they, they live in the middle of nowhere. You know, they went to this very small high school. Yeah. They're, you know, my oldest nephew in, of my brother's oldest son is a very much an introvert, like mm -hmm. does a really good guy. Yeah. But, but does not talk. Right. Doesn't, he's not a mover. He's not Elliot Cation. So it's hard to get these hard to get uh, hard to get work with the ladies hard to get in <laughs> or anyone or anyone he wishes to I mean I don't even know I mean are they what what their jam is and yeah. uh, I hope to never know quite honestly I'm their aunt. <laughs> I hope it all works out for them oh, they don't need man. they don't need me <laughs> so. yeah yes I do not belong in this equation so they can right right hash it out oh man well best of best of luck to them but that's beautiful and i also <laughs> i i also was going to ask you about i know that you said from first album to second or to the last album that you released the um you've been talking about very similar things or the same things and um i wanted to ask for this new album i know you had mentioned uh, one story in there but uh i wanted to ask kind of a two-part is it similar stuff and then also thinking about from the story aspect and then just straight up punchlines, have you 
mix that up or is or are you like heavy storyline in this album or are you heavy just punch, oh punch, no punch it's lines? it's you know it's interesting because this album is kind of a lot like hero in the fact that it's got lighter stuff and and heavier stuff right it's got some stories mm-hmm. and then it's just got you know there's like weird there's just weird joke jokes right there's just kind yeah. of uh much shorter, tighter bits about, you know, like I talk about, I guess some weird, cause I, um, I, I didn't, uh, I never, we go into lockdown and I didn't realize that I didn't own any lipstick cause uh, I'd run out of lipstick and I don't, I've never bought lipstick. And so I tell this joke about why I didn't have any lipstick and what lipstick I got, which was dumb and what lipstick should be. I mean, it's just a, it's a, it's a tiny, it's probably a two minute bit, but Uh it's Uh not heavy. It doesn't, there's nothing to it. I mean, it's just a story about lipstick. There's no, (laughs) there's nobody's changing the world over here with my, with my lipstick story. And, uh, but the, you know, and then it's weird because the last album was sort of the first overtly political you know, mm, like I have, yeah. I might have had one or two. I mean, my stuff was kind of socio political, though I think two albums ago or two or three albums ago, I forget, there's a track called George W. Bush. And mm. here's the thing I named the tracks myself. They are not the tracks, I'm not naming them from the set list. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to name them so that they can be played on the radio. Mm. And it shouldn't have been called George W. Bush. It should have been, it was about sort of go, the rapture and, and it was a dick joke in the end. It was just filthy and it was a weird, but it was called George W. Bush. Didn't make any sense <laughs> anyway. So, but that was, that's the only time I've ever even mentioned sort of a political figure in my, in my act when, mm-hmm. you know, Captain Knobjob got elected. I was like, yeah. I don't want to talk about him. I don't want to give him the stage time. And, right. uh, but I did want to talk about the very real instances of how scared everybody was and how worm people, just every rock in this freaking country has turned over. And now they're marching in the streets. They're just like, no, I'm justified. I'm, I'm an idiot too. And, you know, yeah. and then look at, look at the King idiot over there. And now like, it makes perfect sense that I would also get a platform. And uh, you're like, no, no, crawl back under the rock or eat a bullet or do some fucking thing. But you got to get a, you got to get out of my field of vision because uh, you're making white people look real bad. And, uh, <laughs> and you know, and the yes. learning curve right now for white people is super steep. It's very steep right now as if you weren't paying attention at all. Holy smokes, are you in for a surprise? And if you were paying attention, there's still, there's, I'm, there's some huffing and puffing. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, the learning curve is very, it's pretty steep for men and for, for white people right now. That's mm-hmm. everybody's learning. We're like, oh, I didn't, I never noticed because I was sitting in a gravy boat over here, you know, just eating gra- gravy with a spoon, <laughs> <laughs> not really realizing that uh, you were being killed. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so, yes. Yes. Yeah. I, I totally agree with that. And uh, yeah, trying to learn as much as I can soak up information like those Vietnamese coffee beans. Just I'll tell you, I did a podcast the other day and um, yeah. a couple people said how smart I sounded. And uh, I was on a podcast with a couple of uh, women uh, who are people of color. And so going in, I decided not to talk a lot. And I, and I at least three people told me how smart I sounded. Oh, very. So maybe I need to uh, just hmm, zip. Hmm. Let's, I'll just let you do all the talking. I'll hold up flashcards and then <laughs> questions. I, a, I was hoping you'd expound on this. And uh, so, <laughs> yeah. It was a lot of, it was me just sort of letting the net, you know, comics were such narcissistic solo performers with, you know, like I don't have all the information, but I always have an opinion. Mm -hmm. And so I went into this thing going, 
I have to think like, I have to think like an improv person, you know, I, I have to yes. And yeah. I have to just sort of let them freaking let them finish their thought. And then just like a real conversation, you know, as opposed to this where I'm just barreling over you like a crazy person, but plug and play, who doesn't want that with their podcast? I do. <laughs> no, I feel like, uh, I feel very included and engaged in this conversation. Oh, excellent. I, and very you good. know what? You even included your husband, Andy, at one point. Sure. Where, and the and dog. Where, yeah. Yes. And, and the dog. So it was like one big happy family here. So it was, uh, I feel great. And I was going to say too, I feel like your podcasting etiquette is superb. And I wanted to also talk about your, the dork forest, which dork forest year 14 oh plugging God. along. Congratulations. Since 2006 has it been? Yeah. 2006. Wow. And, uh, it's nuts. It's, um, I just, I really like it. And mm -hmm. so, but I, I've done something this year that I hadn't, um, and, and what inspired it was Jackie and Lori's show because mm. there was a, it was a fan who was taking like 30 second, 10 second clips even, and putting them on the Jackie and Lori Instagram thing. And then he got bored. He had a life to lead. And, uh, I was like, yeah, fair enough, brother. And, uh, so I've hired a guy to go through both the Jackie and Lori show and a woman to go through the dork forest who are both fans. So they listened to the show already. But if they could pull video clips out, 30 second to one minute clips, and I get them captioned uh, using this weird app that allows you to just sort of do a half ass job captioning and then you can fix it a little bit. It's called Headliner App. And uh, just in case anyone cared. And then, yes. um, and then I, but the great thing about like the Dork Forest, I've been sort of a one man band for so long. Mm -hmm. that to, for me to get this woman to listen to the show and pull clips out i'm like oh it is fun look at she's seeing different things right yeah 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 so Aww. yeah it's pretty cool that's really nice yeah. and and it is i mean wow what a forest it is i feel like many more trees have popped up since 2006 and there was i mean tom papa about he talks about making bread some folks talk about video games i think there was greg proops that is quarantine appearances yeah uh proops the the best episodes i think there's been some such great episodes like amy miller and lydia popovich two different episodes about a year and a half ago about dolly parton were wonderful because I didn't know anything about Dolly Parton. Uh, the music episodes are kind of epic because I don't know anything about music. And so there was, uh, for example, somebody did one about Stevie Nicks. And at one point she said that Stevie Nicks, something about Fleetwood Mac. And I said, oh, Stevie Nicks and Fleetwood Mac? And she was like, what just, what just happened? And, uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, Somebody there, I just, I don't, it's not that I don't like different kinds of music. It's just, I don't pay attention. So I don't have the, I don't, I am, that is not my dorkdom. So, right, right. But I will say guy, like early in the pandemic, this is when I was just starting to figure out how to do use zoom and, and put the show out like that. Um, guy Branham did an episode and guy Branham's an amazing stand up comic, wonderful writer, hilarious dude. Uh, did an episode about a family in England from the 1940s, 30s. And you're like, what? Who are these people? And it is, it might be my favorite episode of the year. And then Greg Proops did the Negro Baseball League. Yes. And yes. that was amazing. And Tom Papa did bread. And uh, I don't know, this week it's Ramon Rivas the second, Blazer Ramon. He might smoke a little pot. He is the great comic though. And his, he literally dorked out about that TV show, The Wire, mm. which I could not watch. Too much tension. I understand it was beautifully done. Oh, very nice. Very nice. Now I know that it has been 16 years of dorkdom and lots mm -hmm. of areas have been covered but has there been an area or or something that you have just been yearning to dork out on with somebody that hasn't oh been interesting yet? you know 
people ask me like my favorite episodes and people ask me what somebody hasn't dorked out about. Mm -hmm. I don't really, I, I never know what the hell, like my brother Russ came on over Christmas and did Hallmark Christmas movies followed immediately by Jen Kirkman doing Hallmark Christmas movies. And so back to back episodes about the same topic. So different. My brother, Russ, an econ professor at the University of Wisconsin. So he has spreadsheets about the Hallmark Christmas movies. Jen Kirkman really likes doilies or some fucking thing. Anyway, I mean, it's just like she just loves she you know, there were they're both amazing episodes. My brother Phil came on and talked about Lord of the Rings. My sister came on and talked about uh, cooking. She can she can take any. She could take any food and make like, it would be like her, like, oh, this coaster, you need that to be shredded. And then you just put some, you know, some fish sauce on it and make it edible. And I mean, it's all very, she's a really, really good cook. And so Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there's, Maria Bamford interviewed me once, it was probably 10 years ago, about my Uh dorkdoms. And, and Bamford... The great thing about Maria Bamford is that she incur- she wants you to talk. She has such weird stand up and such interesting topics. Nobody, nobody's as good as her as far as coming up with premises and and then the twist, right? So there and there's so many great comics right now. We're in a golden age of stand up comedy, mm-hmm. and but Maria Bamford is uh, just light years anyway. So, but what one of the, my favorite things about her is that she really wants you to talk about something weird too. She's like, well, what is that? What's that doing for you? You know, where, what, what does that mean to you? Where's the mm-hmm. twist there in that weird topic? And so she's got me writing, you know, material that I never would have written about, you know, romance novels that I would never have admitted to anyone that I read a romance novel. Are you kidding me? I'm an intellectual, I'm an intellectual. Nobody thinks you're an intellectual, Jackie. Okay. So, (laughs) you know, it's, I I did remember you talking about that with the episode with Maria Bamford and romance novels, obviously. And I I thought about my days working at Barnes and Noble corporate. And one of the things that we did was uh, personalization. So we personalized the site based on your preferences, and then would also retarget you if you were on another site with you might be interested in this. A lot of people might be. Mm-hmm. got very upset because they were some were looking at romance novels some were looking at romance novels that i did not even think existed where the romance was not between two people per se um or oh, like furries a- and and all the here's the crazy thing so romance novels stand-up comedy and comic books these are all they can be about anything they're for anyone and everyone and they can be by everyone and anyone like yes. especially like with the advent of web comics and the internet for fan fiction and um and stand-up comedy has always been like that because you could go to an open mic and you will meet the biggest banana head you've ever met and you're like why is that why is that guy allowed three minutes well because everyone is allowed three minutes jackie it's an open mic and you're like, uh, yeah, but I didn't want to hear about that. And you're like, no, no. And, but that person might take that and turn it into a career, you know, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. Nick DiPaolo has a following and it's because someone wants to be yelled at, right? Someone wants yeah, to, yeah. you know, it's, you know, whether your material is about drugs or if it's about hating something or if it's about loving something or whatever mm-hmm. it's about. There's, there's probably at least a hundred people who want to see that. So it's kind of amazing. And romance novels are just like that. Yeah. It really is. It really is. Well, we're going to wind down with some, we've, we've done comedy advice at a comedy advice podcast. And now we're going to give some advice with a little bit of comedy. So some fans have sent in some random questions from the Reddit advice column that we'll answer. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Why? Before we dive into those, I like to get us nice and inspired with an inspirational quote, because I'm mm-hmm, just mm-hmm. a quote guy. And uh, I like to ask my guests if they, if you have any inspirational quotes that help 
center you, inspire you when you're having those days where you're not feeling motivated? Every day, every day, I like to turn my, my uh, what is it, my thinking and my actions over to a power greater than myself. This is, this is how I like to say it's a, I like to, you know, I'm just like, if I, I get in trouble, if I speak without thinking and I get in trouble, if I act without thinking. So if I think, if I pause before I speak, and if I pause before I act, I won't lose my shit and whip a bell pepper at a kid at a grocery store and then have to apologize to him. How about that? So what I like to do is I like to turn my thinking and my actions over some sort of God, any God, God. And in my case, it's my little God and my God Mm -hmm. uh, wishes the best for me. So that is my higher power is a being a universal sort of earth kind of hippie skippy thing that um, is supportive of me and wishes me the best. Oh, that is a wonderful. That's my God. Why would why wouldn't a god wish the best for me, and and be supportive of 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 me? They the, the the universe took the time to make this sweet sweet package, and um. So whatever. So that's what I do. I turn my thinking and my actions over to over to uh, uh my ver- version of God. There you go. Uh, that's that's amazing. It kind of reminds me a little bit of the intention behind the serenity prayer, which was uh, very powerful. Grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know, wisdom the, difference. To know the difference. That's, That's it. Yeah. yeah. That's a great one. Yeah. It is, and it is whether, whether you believe in the God from the author that penned that or a greater being. And Russell Brand has a pretty nice translation in his book about the 12 step program and how he, mm-hmm. he makes it uh accessible to those that might not want to subscribe to let's say right who, who maybe God. aren't even they might not even be addicts right so yes just yes. like Ex- exactly it, go ahead sorry oh i was just gonna say yeah i mean it's because it's I mean, even in those 12 step programs and I, <clears throat> I know a lot of people in some, I mean, I live in Los Angeles, so, um, there's a lot of 12 step programs, uh, in the world mm-hmm. and, but it's, mm-hmm. it's a, it's any God, it's any God. Of, I mean, that's where, where I sort of got the idea of a God of my understanding is, is I was told by any number of friends, there's like, well, you know what they do in the thing. You don't have to, you don't have to pick a. It doesn't have to be Jesus. It doesn't have to be Allah. It doesn't have to be Buddha. It uh, it's better if it's not your husband. It's better if you haven't made you know a person who is probably flawed or a dog that's going to die in nine years. Right. Uh, your higher power and uh, your God. Uh, just you know, and I was raised in a very basic Christian church. The Armenian church is very beautiful, and um, but it's all in Armenian. So I could Ooh. believe anything I wanted. Oh, they could have been saying anything in my, you know, <laughs> I'll tell you what I got out of the Armenian church. Be like the nice man in the picture and go get your dad some coffee. That's all I got out of it. And it's nice. I, it's, it's sort of a social experience and a social. Yeah. So anyway. That is, that's interesting. I had a, an ex-girlfriend that was Armenian and we went to, Armenian mass and I didn't understand I, I think I got the same exact understanding so I got my dad some coffee the next day felt a little better there you and, go yeah and also just try to be of some use just try to help the person in front of you you could do it it's not gonna exactly. that, that's a nice church it's uh yeah. you know it's often the women have to help the people in front of them and the guys are like yeah I'm gonna go I'll be right back and uh <laughs> <laughs> my, it's so funny going to church when I go home because my uh-huh. dad and my brother go to church every week, but they sit, they don't go to mass. Like they don't go to the, they don't listen to the priest. They go sit in the other room and drink coffee. <laughs> it's, do you ever see that episode of the Ray Romano show where he was starting, he said, I'm willing to go to church if I could be one of those guys that, you know, does the, the picks usher. up the money. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Right. Well, that's what my brother is the usher. You know, my brother doesn't have to sit through three hours of Armenian mass. Oh. His wife smart. and kids do, you know? <laughs> but That's smart. He hacked the system. That's beautiful. <laughs> classic cashcation moment. Yeah. <laughs> well, that beautiful quote and beautiful meaning, Jackie. So thank you. I've got a quote here too. It's actually not by a person, but it's by a robot called Inspirobot. So what it does is it takes the wisest words known to man or woman, it uses AI to just mash them together for a beautiful inspirational quote. So, <laughs> just wait, I will read this and you can tell me how this speaks to you, how this inspires you. So this, this quote this week from Inspirebot, it says, condemned is he that resisteth his grandfather for he also resisteth himself. I don't know if you've heard that or if that, to that. Wow. That does speak to me. That, that speaks to me. It's a, my grandmother made so many stuffed bell peppers that we resisted eating stuffed bell peppers and she became very angry and uh, you resisted yourself. And so then she didn't want to give you any food. So that's what it meant to me. There you go. Oh, <laughs> Wow, that was pretty on the dot right there. You conquered Inspirobot, full of wisdom. Sure. Amazing. All right, well, now that we're nice and inspired, I think we can move on to the questions. We've got two here. The first one is uh, sent in from our fan, Cindy. Thank you, Cindy. It says, prom advice. My prom is less than two weeks away, and it's about, it's about 10 days away. My date got a COVID test yesterday, and it ended up positive. He says he might be able to go, but there's a chance he will still have COVID. It will be cutting it super, super close to prom if he doesn't have it anymore by that point, literally a day. I really don't want to risk getting it and giving it to my family members, but I will feel bad if he can't go. I don't know if he will understand. And I basically have to know like within the next day or two, if he can go, any advice on what I should do will be appreciated. Sincerely, I've got a big problem. Problem. Here's my thing. What's the date of like, I think she's already made that decision. So we could just wax philosophical on it. Um, don't be ridiculous. He has COVID. Don't go, don't go wrong with the guy who has a pandemic disease. What are you out of your goddamn mind? <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. I mean, if you want, if it's, if it's, it's a no brainer want, kid. Exactly. Exactly. You know what? If you do a Zoom prom and it's you and him, you could even you don't even have to do your lipstick because Zoom will do it for you. So right, right. I'm gonna hook you up. Eye eyebrows done. Maybe there's a Zoom extension for the beta where you can do prom dress and then I must ask you a question. May I browse your computer? <laughs> oh um... man. Beautiful. All right. Let's mm -hmm. keep rolling on to the last question. This one is from Steve. He found it on Reddit. It said <clears throat> Books seem to me to be a big responsibility. How can I overcome this? When I was about 10 to 13 years old, I read a lot. The main problem is that I had never realized books had mas massages for readers, the hidden meaning, but reading always gave and gives me a lot of pleasure. Unfortunately, I've started reading less books since I got a phone uh, because I love it very much. I want to try and become an active reader again, but I'm very much under pressure from the fear that I will miss the true meaning of books. How can I overcome this? Sincerely, read between the wines. Uh, do you also have a drinking problem? What just happened? <laughs> uh, oh, I was just thinking of the way, way, way. No, I know, I know where he's coming from, though. Um, he's he's beating himself up, coming and going, though. I'll tell him that because he he was like, I read too many books, and now I'm not reading enough books because I'm looking at my phone all the time. And I'll tell you this. Kindle app, huh? Beautiful. It could happen. And uh, no, I, the thing, it's all cyclical, right? Like you, you end up reading, like I read a lot of books and then I don't read a lot of books, right? Like I, it's, it's, right. I, I tend to just like right now I'm playing two video games and not reading a lot. Mm -hmm. Other times I'm reading a lot and not playing any video games. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. it's, it's just cyclical. 
that, yeah, that totally makes, that makes sense. You know, I mean, if you really wanted to go to Pleasure Town, you could re, you could play video games and audiobooks, listen to the books. Audiobooks, you know, at sort of the height of it all, I was listening to an audiobook. I had a book, uh-huh. a hard, a, like a, a, a regular book. And then I also had a Kindle book. And now all three of them were going and um, not at the same time, but like, you know, just it depended, like if I didn't have my book with me, I could go to Kindle and, mm-hmm. and do either do a reread or buy a new book. And then I also have Audible, so I can listen to a book. Mm-hmm. And um, actually I share my Audible with my brother, Phil, and he's constantly buying books. So he's got yeah. books coming out of his ears. So that I would not have even thought about reading, but what the heck? Oh man. Yes. I think I heard on a podcast, his threshold was at least 27 hours of yeah. audio material. Yeah. That's banana land. Uh, I think he's better now. Uh, I think he, um, Down to I think 25. he's listening to more, po- like he, well, he's listening to more podcasts now and not listening to as many books. So okay. it is, uh, he, it's uh, everybody's cyclical, you know, you'll, you'll be, you know, I also, there's a hundred comic books a, a month that I have to read, oh. you know, so not a hundred, maybe 40. So yeah, that's plenty. I, like the pull list is big. Oh, I loved, I, I would actually get distracted being on the Barnes and Noble webs, website and then just getting stuck on comic books. And I'm like, oh my God, I've got to read this one. Got to, so that's why I don't work at Barnes and Noble anymore. Got fired for too many romance novels and uh, too many comic yeah. <laughs> And giving people paper cuts. What? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was something that uh, was weird in the HR exit interview. But <laughs> speaking of exiting, this is the end of the podcast. So first off, Jackie, I just wanted to say huge thank you for joining, chatting with me, chortling, just having a good time. Thanks for having me. Uh, super fun. Where can people, and I was going to ask, where can people find you? What have you got to plug? Where can people? Oh, right. I'm about to go on. The, I don't know when this goes out, but I'm all of May. I am working the road like a normal comedian because I'm vaccinated. And Ooh. if you're vaccinated, you should come out. And if you're not vaccinated, just get vaccinated and then come out in June. How about that? Uh, or July. And because uh, uh, you're going to love being vaccinated because it means you won't die uh that's that's my plug for getting vaccinated but i'm going to arkansas tomorrow and then i'm i'm in seattle i'm in denver if you go to jackiecation.com and uh at jackiecation on all of the socials right tiktok snapchat uh instagram twitter facebook but ja- at jackiecation and jackiecation.com will link you to both podcasts. You'll get to see some some clips of some stand-up if you want to see if you like my stand-up. You can buy merch if you want. I have a garage full of it. Knock yourself out if you ever wanted the t-shirt. and um, Or some CDs or DVDs if you still have those players. Anyway, I do. Look at that. That's a CD player. Oh, wow. Ooh, it looked like glamorous. a, is that like a DIY? You made a Roomba into a CD player or? <laughs> it's a tiny Roomba. No, it's just, I oh. just bought it. It's also Bluetooth. And uh, so, oh, I love yeah, so that. I can, I can, th- I can throw to it or I can uh, stick a, a CD on it and knock yourself out. Amazing. And guess what, guys, you know what? It's going to be all in the show notes. So your beautiful little thumbs can just tap onto those links. So you can go to Jackie's site, buy those tickies. And then you can go um, buy her merch, everything. So it's all going to be there. Yeah, working on the new album. So that's fun. And then I still do Zoom shows most Sundays, though not this Sunday, because I'll be traveling back from Arkansas. Ooh, wowie. What an episode. Mm -mm. I'm almost too full for dessert. What's for dessert, Stefan? Oh, I don't know. How about you go through the catalog and listen to another episode? I'm sure there are plenty that you haven't listened to. The Ted Alexander episode's great. Lisa Lampanelli, Eric Griffin from Workaholics, Mark Norman, comedy. But before you do, stop on over, take a little break, a digestif, and go and follow Jackie, show her some support, slide them, dooms, and tell her you like the episode. And then while you're at it, slide on over to me. Follow me on Instagram if you haven't already. A comedy advice podcast. Give me some love. Send a review my way, rate it on Apple Podcasts or wherever, subscribe, hit that subscribe button, go on the YouTube page and hit subscribe. You can see my beautiful 
youthful face because of this glow light. It just hides all the wrinks, all those wrinkles just gone. No, actually it doesn't, but um, maybe I'll do a zoom enhance so that I can make myself look like 14. This is a zoom enhance. This is not a real pimple that's here. It's actually fake. Zoom, zoom did that. So thank you guys so much for everything. Love you guys. Big old gooch smooch. Mwah.